to Scholastic Awards Night, an annual event in which our students are recognized for their academic and other accomplishments. My name is Heather Lombardo, and this is Ms. Jessica Bailey. Uh, we have the privilege of being the National Honor Society Advisors at RMHS. We are so glad all of you can join us this evening. Thank you, Mrs. Lombardo. We would also like to extend our thanks to Mr. Mulligan and the Jazz Band for gracing us with their musical talents this evening. Thank you, Jazz Band, for that wonderful performance. We'd also like to thank all of you, the parents, teachers, administrators, and other guests for being here tonight to celebrate these talented students. Before we get started, I would like to remind everyone to please silence your cell phones. Now, Mrs. Lombardo and I will be taking our seats, leaving you in the hands of our very capable NHS officers. We now turn the mic over to our MCs for the evening, NHS President Abigail Bacci and Vice President Ashley Liu. Good evening. My name is Abby Bacci, and this is Ashley Liu. We will now observe a National Honor Society tradition. Will you all please rise and join us in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. nationwide for exemplifying the four pillars of the National Honor Society, scholarship, leadership, service, and character. Induction into the society is validation of the candidate's significant achievement in each of these areas. In order to be inducted into the Reading Memorial High School chapter of NHS, students must maintain a weighted grade point average of 3.5, volunteer for a minimum of 40 hours within the past year, hold two strong leadership positions, and demonstrate a character that the faculty and community deem to be representative of the National Honor Society. Each of these elements, each student to display commitment to their school, community, and self. It is tradition for the current year's National Honor Society officers to speak briefly about each of the four main attributes of the National Honor Society. So I would like to turn the mic over to Connor L. to speak about scholarship. For many of you, the word scholarship might bring to mind the following experience. It's late at night, and you've been hunched over a desk, cramming whatever mountain of information it is that you have to memorize for a test the next morning. You don't know whether or not you should just go to bed or keep studying so that you won't forget anything come the next day. Sure, this is an aspect of scholarship, but it goes so far beyond the grade on the test or the number of your GPA that appears on your transcript. Scholarship is a dedication to learning and gaining knowledge. It is not simply the ability to get good grades or memorize notes on a flashcard. It is not measured by your grades on an essay. True scholars will want to learn for the sake of learning. While I, too, have often found myself caring only about the grades, except for second semester senior year, <laughs> I have also begun to want to broaden my knowledge simply because I am interested in the topic. For instance, this past year, I found myself watching different programs in Spanish on my own time, like Mr. Benagi's favorite, Internado, just to better my Spanish speaking abilities and to find out what happens to Marcos and Paula. <laughs> Scholarship is also a dedication to learning throughout life. It does not end with your time in high school or your time in college. You will use the knowledge you have gained in these places to contribute in other facets of, life, facets of your lives. You will try to bring your knowledge to others and apply what you have learned to make yourselves better leaders. Many of you have already done this by volunteering your time, volunteering your time as tutors, teachers, and coaches, where you have taken what you have learned and spread it to others. I will never forget my own experience tutoring a kid named Michael from Coolidge, who was so grateful for my tutoring that he asked me repeatedly if I would be back next year to tutor him again. I was grateful for that opportunity to spread my knowledge to him. You also use your scholarship to help you better know right from wrong so that you can act as people of character do. This kind of scholarship involves learning from the people around you. It can be as simple as taking the time to ask others how they're doing if they seem down. It can be traveling to other regions and countries and learning about other cultures and people leading to the ability to better empathize with people and have a greater understanding of humanity as a whole. Many of you have experienced this or will experience this through journeying across Europe with Dr. Ryan or traveling to less fortunate areas to build houses for habitats for humanity. Shout out to Ms. Bailey. I know for our new inductees, 
Your dedication to scholarship will serve you far beyond those future nights where you're cramming for a test. It will help to lead to greater success beyond the classroom and contribute to development as compassionate, well-informed citizens of the world. Congratulations to all of you on your induction into NHS. Thank you, Connor. Now I would like to introduce Diana Gagnon, who will speak about service. Dr. Martin Luther King once said, if a man is called to be a street sweeper, he should sweep streets even as Michelangelo painted, or Beethoven composed music, or Shakespeare wrote poetry. He should sweep streets so well that all will pause to say, here lived a great street sweeper who did his job well. At moments we may have questioned the legitimate impact that our setting time aside to serve others could actually have on the community. What could be accomplished in the two hours set aside on my Saturday? The words of Martin Luther King remind us that we do not need to travel far or perform enormous acts of goodness to make a difference. Rather, ongoing concern for those in our immediate community is that which may yield the largest impact. Often the most effective service to others is delivered during the real and mundane events of everyday life. In the case of the street sweeper, these efforts were not made so that the individual servant would be recognized, but so that the surrounding community would function more beautifully. When this occurs, people will surely stop to say, here lived a great servant. King's words emphasize that we each have a unique calling, well beyond our abilities in the classroom, to which we can and should apply our time and talents. These individual gifts are further built up through our experiences in the realm of service. As an organization that strives to recognize the best in high school students, the National Honor Society develops students from the inside out, focusing on scholarship and character, which then empowers students to lead and serve others. In this spirit, several service projects throughout the year were offered to members and applicants so that each student could identify those which most suited and piqued their interests. These inc included the Halloween canned goods collection drive for the Reading Food Pantry, Town Tree Lighting Festivities, RMHS's First Boston's Children's Hospital Dance Marathon, the Wakefield Paws Pet Care Clinic, and the annual Reading Food Pantry Collection. Many students also took initiative participating in service-oriented clubs at the high school, such as the Interact Club, the Leo Club, and the Samantha's Harvest Club. Some students even set time aside for a week-long summer service project as members of Habitat for Humanity. The service initiative list is lengthy. As graduating seniors, we hope that next year you new members of the National Honor Society will embrace the opportunity and possibilities for service to others that is affirmed for you tonight. Reflect on the gifts that make you you and recognize the potential to build others up and impactfully change the communities that surround you near and far. Thank you, Diana. Logan Thornton will now discuss leadership qualities required for the inductees. Thank you, Abby. When I moved to Reading in the first grade, I lived on South Street, which is near the new Calarasos. Behind me was an empty lot full of abandoned buildings and rundown machinery. Around the time of fourth grade, some friends and I would go for walks around the complex. We'd climb up the dirt hills, ride our bikes around the streets, and play baseball on the fields. It was our own little place to do whatever we wanted. However, one day we got closer to the buildings. We walked around, examining the spray paint graffiti and broken glass. I guess that broken glass was too tempting because my friends started picking up rocks from the broken concrete and threw them at anything made of glass. The windows, street lights, and other glass panes. Paint. Suddenly, it didn't feel like our own little sanctuary. It felt like we were delinquents trespassing. This change made me feel weird. I didn't like doing something I knew was bad. So I did the only thing that felt right. I talked to my mom. My mom explained that the whole place was scheduled for demolition, but seeing how, I, how uncomfortable I was with being in this situation, my mom asked me an important question. Are you a follower or a leader? Of course my young self said, I'm a leader, but this question continues to float in my head even today, ringing as I make decisions and work with others, pushing me to do more and take on the responsibility that a leader does. 
I knew growing up that I always wanted to be a leader, one that would make my mom and me proud. A leader is often not designated, but emerges as things get tough. This is what separates a follower from a leader. The signs of a true leader are often demonstrated through action. A great leader is confident, level-headed, and communicates effectively with the people they lead. A leader encourages others to be their very best. They are infectiously enthusiastic, creating an environment of hardworking and dedicated people to ensure team success. A leader shouldn't be confused with a boss, however. As the oldest of two siblings, my mom expected that I lead by example, dem demonstrating how to be a big brother and not a boss. She didn't bark orders at my siblings, so neither did I. And during times when I could tell she was frustrated, she always kept a level head, so I learned to do the same. A boss is someone who tells other people what to do and scolds them for failure. A leader empowers their team to achieve a common goal that they tackle together. A leader needs people, just like people need a leader, and in order for a leader to earn respect, he or she must begin by respecting the members of their team. You are all here today because of your dedication to your leadership roles. It is clear that whether you guys are organizing a dance marathon that would end up raising more than $7,000 for Boston Children's Hospital, mentoring kids in our first Lego League, or teaching kids with disabilities to skate or swim, you understand the importance of a leader that is part of a team, someone who works closely with others, empowering and leading them to success. In the words of Stephen Covey, leadership is a choice, not a position. Leadership is participative and active, not passive, or a title or position. Leadership is not a routine, a formula, or a program. It is an attitude, a human activity that comes from the heart and considers the hearts of others. You can choose to be a follower, or you can choose to be a leader, just like my mother's important voice that continues to ring throughout my head. You all have that voice inside you, driving you to go above and beyond. I encourage you all to listen to this voice and never fail to ask yourself if you too are a leader or a follower. Inductees, I finally want to congratulate you on this accomplishment. Your hard work and ability to step up and take charge has not gone unrecognized. In a world where the future is unknown, it is comforting to know that the future leaders of this world are on a path for success. I wish you all the best of luck next year. Thank you, Abby. My favorite Calvin and Hobbes cartoon starts off with Calvin sitting at the dinner table in front of what he describes as a disgusting, slimy blob. Calvin's father insists that he try it, and even if he doesn't like it, it will build character. Mostly, I like this cartoon because my brothers and I often found ourselves in a similar situation, stuck at the table in front of a pile of unappetizing and unknown vegetables for what felt like hours. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> it isn't just a silly cartoon about forcing down your overcooked spinach, though. As kids, we're often told to do our chores because they'll build character. Even in Calvin and Hobbes, Calvin's father always finds a way to teach Calvin that whatever he's doing will help him build character in a variety of activities, from eating his vegetables to surviving bloodthirsty mosquitoes on a camping trip. But how does doing your chores or slapping mosquitoes build character? What does eating all the broccoli your parents cooked, reading to a younger sibling, or volunteering in the community have to do with character? In one of my classes in classrooms in middle school, there was a poster on the wall that read, character is what you do when no one is watching. I think this is what Calvin's father and all of your parents really mean. Character is what defines how you approach a task or problem you've been assigned. It means handling a situation with patience, grace, and poise. To act with good character demands both motivation and action. And it seems impossible to have fun clearing the driveway after a snowstorm, as I'm sure we all experienced several times this winter. But it can be fun if you're motivated and take action to make it into a race with yourself, siblings, or parents. Most importantly, being of good character means acting with integrity, honesty, and responsibility at all times no matter what you're doing at the moment, who might see you doing it. Well, this may sound creepy, but while all of you have been coaching or tutoring or working hard in class, class, your teachers, bosses, and coaches have been watching. They noted how you calmed down the nervous kid in your swim class, how you explained that complicated algebra formula, or how much you cared about your Spanish class, and realized you demonstrate good character. Congrats, I guess those snow days strengthened more than just your back and your arms. Thank you, Molly. 
In addition to being recognized for their own accomplishments, inductees have been given the opportunity to invite a teacher or mentor who, is an, who has had an impact on their life and helped shape who they are today. We ask the following guests to please assemble in alphabetical order near the foot of the stairs so we can show our appreciation for you. We ask that the audience hold their applause until all the teachers have lined up. Jess Bailey, Kelly Beddingfield, Julio Bonaghi, Dave Blanchard, Zach Brokenrope, Lynn Clark, Chrissy Clausen, Paula Colpitz, Jenilee Anderson Coyne, Gerald Coyne, Kate Crosby, Natalie Cuna, Kathleen Daly, Connie De Benedetto, Laurie Donahue, Amy Fidelity, Fidelli, Emily Festa, John Priori, Kevin Gernster, and Neil Gillis and Lewis Margerton. Cara Gleason, Kent Hatton, Susan Hooper, Michelle Hawkinson, Danielle Jones, Kristen Killian, Sarah Lentz, Ali Lynch DeSorbo, Tim McIntyre, Brian McFetty, Ricardo Munez, Andrew Norton, Connie Quackenbush, Sarah Reem, Leah Richardson, Amy Raffle, Jeffrey R Ryan, Chuck Strout, Lucy Warren Whitman, and Allison Williams. from the students who nominated each mentor. Honored guests, after your tribute is read, please come forward and receive a small token of our appreciation. Attached to this token are the names and words of the students who invited you here today. After you receive your thank you, you may take a seat. Ms. Jessica Bailey, RMHS Social Studies teacher. The student recognizing Ms. Bailey says, I have known Ms. Bailey since freshman year. To this day, she is my favorite teacher I've ever had and she is such a great person. Mrs. Kelly Bedingfield, RMHS math teacher. The student recognizing Mrs. Bedingfield says, she pushed me this year to participate in class, both with answering questions and helping my classmates if they were having trouble. <laughs> Mr. Julio Benagi, RMHS Spanish teacher. The students who want to recognize Mr. Benagi says, he pushes his students to be their best and offers advice to help us through adversity. One student says, without his inspirational speeches, I would not be the person I am today. <laughs> Mr. David Blanchard, Army Just Social Studies teacher. The student thanking Mr. Blanchard says, Coach Blanchard has been a great coach and mentor for me throughout high school. He's taught me important life lessons through sports that I will continue to use for the rest of my life and show me that if you are willing to put the time and effort into what you do in life, you will be successful. And I am grateful that he's part of my life. <laughs> Mr. Zachary Brokenrope, RMHS English teacher. Several students wanted to thank Mr. Brokenrope, who couldn't be here tonight. Those students wanted to thank him for his inspiring determination and kindness, and for leading and engaging in spirited class discussions as well as always being there to talk and encouraging that hard work pays off. <laughs> Ms. Lynn Clark, RMHS Guidance Department Secretary. The student who wants to thank Ms. Clark says, she understands how stressful high school can be. She cares so much about students and is one of the kindest people at the school because she knows the students have so much more to them than just their experience at school. <laughs> Ms. Chrissy Clausen, RMHS English teacher. The students who want to recognize Ms. Clausen say, Ms. Clausen is one of the best teachers and nicest people I know. She cares so much about every one of her students and works hard to make sure they do well. And she made learning exciting and I found myself more and more interested in what we were learning. <laughs> Ms. Paula Colpitz, religious education teacher. The person thanking Ms. Colpitz says, she has encouraged me to spread my faith and enjoy all of my faith. She has taught me to use faith in stressful times. I wouldn't be the person today, I wouldn't be without her. <laughs> Ms. 
Ms. Jenna Lee Anderson Coyne, former English teacher at Coolidge Middle School. One student wants to thank Ms. Coyne for caring about her students as much as she cared about what she taught. She always checked in with me whenever I was having a bad day, even if I thought I was hiding. Along with her kind nature, she's a killer style, and now whenever I dress a certain way, my friends like to tell me that I look like her. I, I always carry with me the advice she shared, such as when you stop caring about what people think, you discover what you really like and who you really are. Ms. Coyne inspired my passion for English and literature, and because of her, I will be pursuing psychology in college in hopes that I'll get my PhD. <laughs> Mr. Gerald Coyne, Coolidge Middle School science teacher. The student recognizing Mr. Coyne says, he inspires my passion and love for the sciences. He connected his lessons to my everyday world, which made his class relatable and interesting. Even after all of these years, Mr. Coyne is still very supportive and is someone I can always go to if I need help. He is someone who I admire and respect and I feel lucky to have had him as a teacher. <laughs> the students recognizing Ms. Crosby want to thank her for teaching them how to see the world. They say, she taught me not only how to look on literature through different perspectives, but on life too. She's an excellent English teacher freshman year and since then has always let me borrow books from her library and encouraged me to pursue my interest in writing. <laughs> Ms. Natalie Cuna, RMHS drama teacher. The student thanking Ms. Cuna says, she has been a mentor of mine since middle school and one of the major re reasons I continue to take part in theater today. She has taught me so much and has helped me to get where I am today. Ms. Kathleen Daly, RMHS photography teacher. The student wants to recognize Ms. Daly because she has been really nice and understanding for me. She shows the whole class great professionalism and respect. She cultivated my interest in photography into my favorite hobby and always gives good and constructive criticism. <laughs> Ms. Connie De Benedetto, retired Coolidge science teacher. The person thanking Mrs. DiBenedetto says she's the best mentor that anyone could ask for. They say, ever since I sat in her sixth grade science class, I knew that I wanted to pursue a career in science. She has not only noticed this interest, but pushed me to follow it in every way, specifically through Science Olympiad and more. Even though I am far past sixth grade, she always goes out of the way to say hi and make sure I am still following that science bug. Thank you for your overwhelming kindness, wisdom, and inspiration. Ms. Laurie Donahue, RMHS Spanish teacher. The student who is recognizing Ms. Donahue says, she has always created a positive and fun learning environment while at the same time challenged me to do my best. She has been a very influential and has encouraged me to bring back the Spanish club this year as a co-president. Thank you for being a great mentor and an influential person in my life. Ms. Amy Fidelli, RMHS social studies teacher. The students recognizing Mrs. Fidelli says, she challenges her students while also taking their limits into consideration. She's extremely understanding and always available for extra help. She's genuinely interested in the topics we learn about and challenge us to view history through many different perspectives. <laughs> Ms. Emmeline Festa, RMHS French teacher. The student thanking Ms. Festus says that she's an excellent teacher who makes learning easy and enjoyable. Even while teaching rig rigorous courses, she remains kind, calm, and caring towards her students. Her combination of discipline and gentleness is a rare, rare quality that makes her an inspiration to me. <laughs> Mr. John Fiore, Army Just Social Studies teacher. The person thanking Mr. Fiore says, Mr. Fiore has taught me values I'll cherish for the rest of my life, like accountability, perseverance, and respect. These values have paved the way into my journey of life nearing the end of high school and taught me to always give 100% in whatever I do. <laughs> Mr. Kevin Gerdster, Army Just Facilities Manager. 
A student says, Mr. Gertz constantly encouraged me and it motivates me to be my best. He's taught me to be a better leader and a better person. He not only cares about me, my work in the drama club, but in all of my activities. He asks questions and offers solutions to any problems I might have. Mr. Gernster cares and never fails to put a smile to support me in all of my endeavors. <laughs> Mr. Neil Gillis and Ms. Lois Margison, swim coaches. One student would like to thank both Mr. Gillis and Ms. Margison. They say, my coaches have always pushed me to try my best. They not only help me improve my skills in the pool, but in life as well. I'm also very grateful that they introduced me to Sunday Swim program. We would like to invite both Mr. Gillis and Ms. Martison out now to receive their thank you. <laughs> Ms. Kara Gleason, RMHS Social Studies teacher. Students thank Ms. Gleason for inspiring my current love of history. They say she is always a friendly face and she deeply cares about her students. Her passion for what she teaches makes me remember them even years later. Another student says they used to hate history, but Ms. Gleason changed their view on the subject and it became one of their favorite classes. And her positivity and intelligence has always inspired me to pursue being a teacher when I go to college. <laughs> Mr. Kent Hatton, RMHS science teacher. The student recognizing Mr. Hatton says that intro to intro engineering design is still my favorite class of the past three years. He is a great teacher and he has always been very helpful to me whenever I need anything. <laughs> Ms. Susan Hooper, RMHS guidance counselor. A student says she has served me as a role model due to her compassion and caring for the students she mentors. I have learned a multitude of skills and philosophies from her that I will carry with me throughout my life. She has provided me endless support and has motiv motivated me to be the best student and the best person I can be. <laughs> Ms. Mich Michelle Hopkinson, RMHS physical education teacher. Several students say Co Coach Hopkinson has taught them not only about volleyball, but about so much off the court. They say she has always believed in every player and she keeps us mo motivated. She always pushes me to be my best on the volleyball court and in the classroom. Not only is she an outstanding coach, but an outstanding person. She also taught me what it means to give back to the community. She has created a community that has been a second family. <laughs> Ms. Danielle Jones, RMHS math teacher. One of the students thanking Ms. Jones says she has helped me tremendously in math. Prior to this year, I was a below average math student, but with her help, I have been able to achieve things I never knew I was capable of. Another student says Ms. Jones has been my class advisor since my freshman year. Through all of our class events, everything has always been organized and perfect because of her. Kristen Killian, RMHS drama teacher. The students recognizing her say, Ms. Killian is not only an incredibly hardworking educator dedicated to her students, she is also a friend. She has used her positivity and encouragement to inspire me to become not just a better student, but a better person. Another says, Ms. K has been my teacher since I was nine years old. During those years, I have gained a passion for music that I credit to her. kindergarten teacher. A student says Ms. Lentz was the perfect kind kindergarten teacher. She was exactly the kind of person I needed to get me excited about learning in school as a child. My love of learning began in her kindergarten classroom. <laughs> Mrs. Allie Lynch DeSorbo, RMHS English, te English teacher. The students thanking Mrs. Lynch DeSorbo says she has instilled kindness as a daily lesson, something she wanted us to learn just as much as literature. And she is such a kind person. Walking into her classroom is like a breath of fresh air each and every day. I would just like to thank her for all the prefer, creative effort she puts into her students. <laughs> Mr. Timothy McIntyre, 
RMHS science teacher. The student says, I have always struggled in the sciences, but once I got to Mr. McIntyre's chemistry class, things started to click. My grades skyrocketed, and I wasn't just getting good grades. He made sure I really understood the material. I was so happy and felt lucky to have him again as a teacher this year because he is the, one of the best I have ever had. Mr. Brian McVetty, former RMHS English teacher. Mr. McVetty taught at RMHS until last year, but his impact on students can still be seen, with students saying, Mr. McVetty pushed our English class to think deeply about what we were reading and how it connected to our lives. He encouraged me to trust my own ideas and search for the evidence to support them. Um, and his class was engaging and entertaining. <laughs> I learned so much and I cannot thank him enough. <laughs> Mr. Ricardo Muniz, youth leader. The student thanking Mr. Muniz says, ever since we've met, he has helped me with my problems. He helped me by trusting me with the responsibility of teaching Sunday school class. He has also given me the opportunity to help the community in soup kitchens offered by our church. He is a role model for me. He is responsible, intelligent, generous, and I can't thank him enough for everything he has done. <laughs> Mr. Andrew Norton, Parker Middle School Band Director. One student says, Mr. Norton taught me how to play trumpet. He always encouraged me to keep trying even when it was so hard I thought I couldn't do it. He made band enjoyable because he was so patient and kind. He taught me how to love band and stick with it, and now I play in two high school bands that I love. <laughs> Ms. Connie Quackenbush, Parker Middle School science teacher. The person thanking Ms. Quackenbush says she made me open up and really pushed me not to be afraid to talk in class and raise my hand. She always supported everyone and helped when you had trouble. <laughs> Ms. Sarah Reem, drama teacher at Phillips Exeter Academy. The person thanking Ms. Reem has a special relationship with her. He says, my aunt is one of the people who got me interested in drama and theater. The way she's so true to herself and honest and empathetic has really rubbed off on me. Her love, and, her love of books and reading was amazing for me when I was younger. <laughs> Ms. Leah Richardson, RMHS English teacher. The student thanking Ms. Richardson says she made her classroom feel like a home for all of her students. She also taught me, without knowing it, to fall in love with English and writing. Before her class, English was just another period in a long cycle, but after, it was a second home where I got to do what I loved and felt passionate about. <laughs> Ms. Amy Ropel, Parker Middle School art teacher. A student who wishes to recognize Ms. Ropel says, she was one of my favorite art teachers and pushed me and other students to really think critically and write about art. Jeffrey Ryan, RMHS Social Studies teacher. The people who want to thank Dr. Ryan say that every morning he is there to talk to. Whenever I needed a laugh or a smile, he passes on his positivity. He's made me realize that being myself is enough to make every, everyone else's days better. Others say he is an inspiration. He believes in each of us. He is one of the kindest people I know and makes an effort to be there to help his students. Learning is so interesting and fun in his class. MHS math teacher. The person thanking Mr. Strout says, Mr. Strout is a legendary man, teacher, and mentor who has guided me to bring out the best in everyone. He is a strong advocate of learning from failure, known for his famous motto, fail early, fail often. He also mentors the RMHS robotics team, which allowed me to utilize my passion in engineering. Dance instructor. 
The student thinking Ms. Whitman says, I wouldn't be the dancer I am today without her. She pushes me to my limits because she knows there's always room for improvement. She's an incredible teacher who has shared her wisdom with me and the girls in my class for many years. <laughs> Mrs. Allison Williams, our MHS math teacher. A student says, thank you to Mrs. Williams for giving me the confidence and guidance I needed to advance to a higher math level. Math was never my strong suit until she helped me realize my potential. She was extremely approachable and created a holistic and positive environment that I looked forward to attending each day. Thank you, for, thank you all for the impact you have had on the lives of the inductees and for attending tonight's ceremony. Please join me in a final round of applause for all of the honored guests. Mr. Bakker, the principal of Reading Memorial High School. After his remarks, Mr. Bakker will join Dr. Doherty, superintendent, superintendent, superintendent sorry, <laughs> of schools, in presenting the certificates to this year's inductees. Thank you very much, Abigail. Good evening, teachers, families, community members, current National Honor Society members, new inductees, and Century Club Award recipients. I cannot begin to tell you what a tremendous honor it is to be alongside of so many amazing educators and mentors whose support has contributed immensely to these young adults about to be recognized this evening. On a proud night such as this, we must first recognize the tireless efforts of each and every family member and mentor who has helped our honored students arrive at this point. To both our National Honor Society and Century Club members, you have made all of us in the Reading Memorial High School community especially proud. Your commitment to scholarship and to service inspires your fellow classmates and dedicated teachers to give their very best day in and day out. You are the best and brightest of this great school and now join an impressive list of Reading's most talented young minds who will undoubtedly leave their mark on the world in the future. We are all excited and encouraged to know that you are the stewards of the future generations. Now take great care of it, as we know you will. Congratulations again to all the NHS inductees, award recipients, and honored teachers who inspire us all. Your collective commitment to academic excellence and to the success of others through both student and teacher leadership has helped to make Reading Memorial High School a community that we are all extremely proud of. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bakker. Now I would like to ask all the National Honor Society inductees to stand up and file onto the stage where you will meet Connor up. To, to make sure each student and their families can hear the names read, we ask that you hold your applause until after all of the names have been read. Ryan Asarian, taught religious education for middle schoolers in the summer. Jake Backer, project lead for robotics team. Samantha Bolio, after school elementary classroom assistant. <coughs> Caroline Bigger, counselor at children's track camp. Caitlin Bonatadavis, four year member of the robotics team. Maria Boyle, taught CCD classes to first graders. Brian Cahill, taught kids with disabilities to skate at special skates. Michael Capone, Reading Public Library neck guide. 
Alexandria Casarano, tutored middle schooler students in Spanish. Mateo Coelho, interned at Reading Community Television. Ainsley Cohen, taught CCD classes to middle schoolers. Alyssa Cole, made blankets and hats to donate to the homeless. Alana Connolly, taught volleyball to local kids. Megan Cora, net guide at the Reading Public Library. Rebecca Corey, helping with the March for Our Lives event at RMHS. Caitlin Commodores, student representative on the school committee. Olivia D'Amico, geometry tutor for RMHS students. Lucy Dontemont, peer leader for A World of Difference. Garrett Devlin, member of MIT's Team America Rocketry Challenge. Dimitri Doherty, vice president of the Samantha's Harvest Club. Victor Dos Santos, Sunday school teacher for his church. Emma Driscoll, taught religious education classes to first graders. Sean Driscoll, tutored at Coolidge Middle School. Daniel Erickson, volunteered at the Sautel Family Hospice House. Nora Faulkner, looked after kids in church nursery. Devin Forbes, shoveled snow for elderly residents during the winter. Holly Gilson, coached younger kids in softball. Kate Giuliano, taught CCD to energetic third graders each Saturday morning. Molly Rothkow, co-teachers for fourth grade CCD's classes. Rita Gurko, taught Sunday swim classes to kids with disabilities. Julia Hagen, captain-elect of track and cross-country teams. John Hardy, volunteered at Mass General Hospital. William Hatterley, class president. Kyle Hildreth, design lead on the robotics team. Emily Hurley, peer leader for A World of Difference. Yolanda Harim, helped to build houses in North Carolina with Habitat for Humanity. Nicole Kendall, lead tech for the drama club. Amy Lenguao, played the lead role in the RMHS drama club's production of Harvey. Mara Latendra, taught Sunday swim classes to children with special needs. Madeline Lieberman, mentored and taught middle school girls in the after school club. Jessica Liu, helped build homes for families in need in North Carolina with Habitat for Humanity. Sophie Lynch, co-leader of a Girls Empowerment Book Club. Emily Marcotte, taught Sunday school to elementary schoolers at Genesis Church. Lydia May, taught Sunday school to, first, to the first graders at her church. Michael Mealy, worked with the Volunteer Lawyers Project to help low-income individuals. Morgan Miller, volunteered at Collaborative for Regional Educational Services and Training. Vivian Moda, teaching French to children at the library. Isabel Molitari, Assistant Music Director of the Birch Meadow Musical. Julia Nardone, works with special needs children. Matt O'Halloran, coach of the Coolidge Science Team. Jessica O'Neill, taught CCD classes at St. Agnes Church. Kevin O'Neill, two-year member of Century Club. Aaron O'Neill, taught CCD at St. Anathesius Church. Caitlin Panikopoulos, volunteering at Winchester Hospital. Janavi Patel, volunteer coach for the Coolidge Science Team. Joseph Paveo, coached younger kids to teach to play football. 
Matthew Peppy, volunteering at Jams for Jake Music Festival to help spread addiction awareness. Alyssa Perpetnowitz, taught soccer and basketball to kids with disabilities. William Hugh, coached students on the Coolidge Middle School Science Team. Matthew Reem, taught computer classes for the elderly. Arabella Rice, kennel manager at Service Dog Project. Ava Rice, teaches preschoolers at Little Tre Treasures Schoolhouse. Rochelle Rickoff, co-leader of a girls' empowerment book club. Anna Roberts, teaches disabled children how to swim on Sundays. Caroline Roscoe, worked at the senior, at the Reading Senior Center. Antonio Ruiz Nokes, director of production of Peter Chan Jr. with the Local Creative Arts Summer Program. Nicole Saman, teaching swim lessons to little kids. Brett Senders, robotics strategy lead. Brian Chin, taught young children as a teacher for the Girls Who Code program. Rachel Sherland, helps the elderly and disabled at Winchester Hospital. Ashley Shep, cheer coach for Pop Warner A team. Brenna Sullivan, taught CCD to second grade students. Bryn Swanson, teaches Sunday school to toddlers every Sunday. Mario Verrier, captain of the field hockey team. Thomas Walsh, mechanical lead on the robotics team. <coughs> Kelly Ward, coach for the Coolidge Science Olympiad team. Alexandra Wheeler, taught Sunday swim lessons to kids with special needs. Chris Wheeler, volunteered on a service trip to New Orleans. Lindsay Yatsuhashi, volunteered at National Youth Leadership Training over the summer. after me. I pledge myself to uphold the highest purposes of the National Honor Society to which I have been elected, striving in every way to make its ideals the ideals of my school and my life. Thank you and congratulations. You may now be seated. To our NHS inductees, as our beloved speaker would say, you've made it. Each year, we invite one guest of honor to deliver an address on education, society, and the world around us. This evening, our speaker will be Ms. Audra Williams, the English department head here at RMHS. These officers and I have all had the distinct privilege of being in her British literature class last year, and I myself have had her again this year for the English elective of Diverse Voices. When it came time to choose this year's keynote speaker, it was ultimately an easy decision. Mrs. Williams truly embodies every one of the four NHS values, which in turn inspires each of her students to pursue the values themselves. 
For example, her leadership as department head serves the RMHS community by ensuring that everything runs smoothly. She stays late for staff meetings and spends extra time in school to help her students. As for scholarship, Mrs. Williams is vastly knowledgeable in the subject of literature and always facilitates discussions to deepen understanding and encourage the exploration of new ideas. She sets the bar high academically for all of her students, expecting their best work each and every day. Through Mrs. Williams' excellent leadership, we were all encouraged to take our own leadership roles in discussions, whether they included the whole class or were in small groups. This year, in Diverse Voices, Mrs. Williams led the class through difficult conversations on the top topics of privilege, race, and gender. Through Mrs. Williams' great leadership and character, we felt comfortable sharing our own, own ideas and knew the things that we had to say meant something to her in the class. Mrs. Williams genuinely cares about her students, having been described by one of her students as one of the kindest and warmest teachers I've ever had. In the face of her exemplary character, students in her class strive to exhibit the same. We learned how to think critically and apply what we learned not only in the classroom but in the real world, while simultaneously learning about the significance of bananas in her teaching career. We, her students, are irrevocably impacted by her influence, and we are honored that she accepted our invitation to speak tonight. Please join us in giving a warm welcome to Mrs. Williams. Wow, thank you for that. I appreciate that. It is truly a privilege to address the National Honor Society inductees tonight, especially on this night dedicated to academic and personal excellence. Thank you for the opportunity. When I was eight years old, and adults would ask me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I would say confidently, an astronaut. I thought it would be so cool to blast through space and maybe even someday land on Mars. I even applied to space camp in the fourth grade, but alas, I got rejected. My fear of heights also got the best of me as I grew older, so there was that. I decided then that I would become a professional drummer after I saw Tico Torres, the drummer for Bon Jovi, somebody knows him out there, go to town on a set of drums on MTV. I just dated myself too. During my teenage years, my mother told me I should be a lawyer since I was a master at argumentation. But, as you probably figured by now, I never became a professional drummer, an astronaut, a lawyer, or any of the other jobs that I thought I would pursue when I was little. My dream professions varied so widely that I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to be or how I should answer that pressing question I always got from adults. Lucky for me, I did land the next best job to astronauts and drummers. And that road has led me here tonight. You have become part of my story, and for that, I am grateful. Throughout our childhoods, we are all asked countless times, what do you want to be when you grow up? And predictable responses usually follow. A veterinarian, a bus driver, NBA all-star, What's interesting is not so much our answer to this question, but rather the question itself. I propose we reframe this timeless inquiry, and instead of asking kids what they want to be when they grow up, we ask them what kind of person they want to be. With that slight change of wording, the focus shifts. Everything changes. Can you imagine if a child replied with, I want to be humble, or I want to speak the truth, or I want to use my voice to advocate for those who don't have one. Those answers don't lessen the drive to succeed at any chosen career path, but they do emphasize living life with purpose no matter the job choice. Lucky for me, I chose teaching. For me, teaching is an act of love. I love who you are. And what's most important about you doesn't fit into a rubric. You are so much more than your grades. The NHS officers sitting with me on stage tonight get that. Take Diana, for example. This girl is tenacious. In Brit Lit last year, she would seek me out for extra help so she could see more growth in her writing. She's invested for learning, in learning, excuse me, for learning's sake and she knows that hard work pays off. Next, 
Logan Thornton. Last year, my student teacher turned to me after Logan delivered the best Hamlet presentation I have ever seen and said, this kid is next level. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Connor L., not only is he mature and smart, he's also the ultimate gentleman. Ashley Liu is kind and driven. In fact, when her schedule didn't allow her to take AP English this year, she decided to take it online on her own time. Talk about passion and dedication. I was also fortunate to teach Molly Jones, who also sits on stage tonight. And then I got to travel to Europe with her on a school trip last summer. Not only is she incredibly bright and genuine, she truly cares about her fellow classmates. She can get along with just about anyone. Lastly is Abby Bocci, who I had the pleasure of teaching, as she mentioned, both last year and this past semester. You will never meet a more personable, motivated, and curious student. Abby, just like the other NHS officers, raises the level of expectation in the classroom and makes my job a little easier. Students, you couldn't ask for better role models than the ones up here tonight. They know that nothing is more attractive than humility or a solid work ethic. Nothing is more rewarding than the satisfaction of a job well done. Nothing makes you feel more fulfilled than an act of empathy. Social media and news outlets might not glorify these qualities. They're not as sexy as earning a big paycheck or breaking the internet with salacious pictures of yourself. But that's because what is right is not always popular, and what's popular is not always right. We don't always need to follow the familiar plot lines of success in order to achieve the inner peace that comes from living with integrity. That's why Diana, Logan, Ashley, Molly, Abby, and Connor are not just academic giants, they're some of the best people I know. Can we talk about passion? Can you imagine being asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? And responding with, passionate? I'm sure it would confuse some of your peers, but how great would that response be? In fact, passion for their academic disciplines is the reason many of my esteemed colleagues are here tonight by invitation. I guarantee they weren't only invited because they made you love history or math, but because they love teaching you. After all, teaching is about personal relationships. These educators have contributed to your academic and personal growth in some way, and perhaps have helped you decide what path you want to follow whether it's a future in science, foreign language, or dare I say, a career in English. Maybe the professionals in this room tonight make you want to be a better person. Maybe they even frustrate you at times by pushing you to be your personal best. I wonder if they intentionally set their sights on being role models for high school students when they were young? I don't know, but I encourage you to ask them tomorrow. For me, I want to be the person who shows up. If you asked me that when I was a kid, that's not what I would have said. Instead, that philosophy has been built through a lifetime of experience. I've learned that being present, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally, is one of the most important things a person can do. It's about showing up with ice cream when your best friend didn't get into the college of her choice. It's about sitting with that new kid at lunch who's all by himself. It's about being present during a parent's cancer treatment. And it's about sitting with each other in times of grief. Every action is a choice. I wouldn't have said that years ago, but it's what I know now. Sometimes words fail, and your presence alone is all that is needed. Working intentionally on who we want to be is far more difficult than what we want to be, but it is the most important life work we do. Persevering through hard times and learning how to deal with difficult feelings is how we build resilience and character. 
Being at peace with who we are takes work. To my students in the audience tonight, what I'm talking about might sound a bit familiar. One of the first assignments of the school year asks you to think about the legacy you want to leave behind. When we consider our legacy, we are forced to think about how we want our own stories to end. This assignment was inspired by our study of the ancient epic Beowulf. The eponymous hero exemplifies to his people and to readers what it means to live a good life. He is an exaggerated character who embodies bravery, loyalty, and honor. You rose to the occasion for this assignment when I asked you to consider an unknown future. None of you said you wanted to be remembered for your fancy car, your slam dunks, or your high paying job. Instead, in case you forgot, you desire to be remembered for kindness, philanthropy, being a good friend. The future leaders in this room tonight left an impression on me that makes me hopeful. Remember, your life doesn't have to follow a prescribed plot. Most of you will pursue college in the near future and begin another chapter. Like any good story, there will be conflict. It's necessary. It's what drives the action. Embrace it, for there is no growth without struggle. On the other, harsh, other, excuse me, on the other side of hardship is resiliency. Be vulnerable and take risks in the classroom on the sports field, or in your personal relationships. You don't need to be perfect. Perfection is unattainable anyway and not worth pursuing. Like you, Hamlet procrastinates. Beowulf is proud. Victor Frankenstein risks everything and everyone he loves for the pursuit of knowledge. However, these characters are balanced out by others in their life. Hamlet has his Horatio, the one who keeps him grounded and knows his deepest secrets. Frankenstein has Henry Clerval, the one who cares for him when he's sick. And Beowulf has Wheelaf, the young one who helps him retain his dignity in his dying moments. Don't forget that some of the most beloved characters in literature are also some of the most flawed but all of them has someone who shows up. I'll leave you with this. Your homework assignment tonight is for you to decide what kind of person you want to be when you grow up, and I'll be asking you in the morning. Thank you. Ms. Terry and I are uh, pleased to present the Century Club uh, winners tonight. Um, the Century Club is a tradition at RMHS that was initiated by former principal Rena Merkin and assistant principals Pat Scatini and Bob Quinn to recognize students' academic achievement. Regardless of course level or academic discipline, the following honorees have achieved at the highest levels on the basis of academic excellence and demonstrated effort. Making up the Century Club each year are 10 freshmen, 20 sophomores, 30 juniors, and 40 seniors. Congratulations to all of this year's, uh, this evening's Century Club inductees. You have exemplified dedication and achievement throughout the school year. 
I will be reading the names of Century Club inductees for the grades I oversee, grades 9 and 11. Ms. Terrier will do the same for grades 10 and 12. Inductees, I'll read your names. Uh, I'm going to start with the ninth graders. I'll read all of your names so you can assemble at the side of the stage. And I'll ask everyone to hold, hold your applause and we'll read names a second time as students come across to uh, get their certificate. So thank you. So with the following uh, members of uh, Century Club from grade nine, please come to the side of the stage. Joanna Coram, Lydia Friedman, Tessa Goldlust, Sophia Grimm, Abigail Lovell, Tanya Minoj, Aaron Mulvey, Gavin Pu, Hui Ching Shu, and Hannah Whitney. And receiving her award first will be Joanna Corn. Lydia Friedman. Tessa Goldlust. Sophia Grimm. Abigail Lovell. Tanya Minoj. Erin Mulvey. Gavin Poo. Pui Ching Shu. And Hannah Whitney. Good evening, everyone. At this time, I would like to call forward the Grade 10 Century Club recipients. Daniel Chin, Ashley DeCourcy, Catherine Delaney, Mara Drummy, Megan Farwell, Eliza Kwan, Alexandra Lamond, Shiley Lee, Taylor Marchant, Lucas Martin, Corinne Mulvey, Nancy O'Brien, Jacqueline O'Neill, Isabel, Isabella Pastore, Alec Plano, Megan Rienzo, Christopher Sewell, Matthew Smith, Kathleen Strathalopoulos, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, Kathleen, Allison Tompkins. Daniel Chin. <laughs> Ashley DeCourcy. <laughs> Catherine Delaney. <laughs> Mara Drummy. Megan Farwell. <laughs> Eliza Kwan. <laughs> Alexandra Lamont. <laughs> Shiley Lee. Taylor Marchant. <laughs> Lucas Martin. <laughs> Corinne Mulvey. <laughs> Nancy O'Brien. <laughs> Jacqueline O'Neill.
Isabella Pastori. Alec Plano. Megan Rianzo. Christopher Sewell. Matthew Smith. Kathleen Staphylopoulos. and Allison Tompkins. It is now my honor to recognize the grade 11, the grade 11 inductees to the Century Club, and I ask the following 30 members of the 11th grade class to assemble to my right with Ms. Terrio. Brian Cahill, Michael Capone, Alexandria Casarano, Alyssa Cole, Alana Conley, Megan Corr, Caroline Dalton, Dimitri Doherty, Emma Driscoll, Holly Gilson, Kate Juliana, Molly Grotkow, Rita Gurko, Yolanda Harin, Stephen Jin, Madeline Lieberman, Jessica Liu, Michael Mealy, Morgan Miller, Kevin O'Neill, Catherine Parody, Joseph Paveo, Alyssa Fryputnowitz, Arabella Rice, Antonio Ruiz Noakes, Brenna Sullivan, Thomas Walsh, Kelly Ward, Alexandria Wheeler, and Zi Ying Zhang. First to be recognized is Brian Cahill. Michael Capone. <laughs> Alexandria Casarano. <laughs> Alyssa Cole. <laughs> Alana Conley. Megan Corum. <laughs> Caroline Dalton. <laughs> Dimitri Doherty. <laughs> Emma Driscoll. <laughs> Holly Gilson. Kate Juliana. <laughs> Molly Grotkow. <laughs> Rita Gurko. <laughs> Yolanda Harin. <laughs> Stephen Jin. Madeline Lieberman. <laughs> Jessica Liu. <laughs> Michael Mealy. <laughs> Morgan Miller. Kevin O'Neill. <laughs> Catherine Parody. <laughs> Joseph Paveo. <laughs> Alyssa Praputnowitz.
Arabella Rice. Antonio Ruiz Nose. Brenna Sullivan. Thomas Walsh. Kelly Ward. Alexandra Wheeler. Z Ying Zhang. And now I'd like to call up grade 12 Century Club recipients. Simon Andrews, Mirza Mohammed Bey, Caitlin Bergeron, Olivia Blumenshine, Michaela Boudreau, C. William Bresnahan, Kevin Chetwind, Jackson Donnell, Connor L., Eliza Fendel, Lou Yao Friedman, Rebecca Gernert, Roberto Jaron, Lucia Johnson, Molly Jones, Abigail Keating, Carrie Kilbin, Joshua Lieberman, Ashley Liu, Willow Machado, Alexandra Mayer, Michael Maroney, Yanni Pang, Shannon Parks, Juliana Peacock, Jillian Rhodes, Jamie Rotondo, Caroline Schepoletti, Sophia Shemansky, Logan Thornton, Daniel Tompkins, Olivia Ventola, Justin Boblin, Kathleen Walsh, Matthias Pools, Erin Kwan, Grace Leahy, Jillian Shemansky, Kirsten Stevens, and Emma Weston. <laughs> Simon Andrews. Mirza Muhammad Bain. <laughs> Caitlin Bergeron. <laughs> Olivia Blumenschein. <laughs> Michaela Boudreau. C. William Bresnahan. <laughs> Kevin Chetwin. <laughs> Jackson Donnell. <laughs> Connor L. Eliza Fendel. <laughs> Lou Yao Friedman. <laughs> Rebecca Gernert. <laughs> Roberto Jaron. <laughs> Lucia Johnson. Molly Jones. <laughs> Abigail Keating. <laughs> Carrie Kilbin. <laughs> Joshua Lieberman. Ashley Liu. <laughs> Willow.
Willow Machado. Alexandra Mayer. Michael Maroney. Yanni Peng. Shannon Parks. Juliana Peacock. Jillian Rhodes. Jamie Rotundo. Caroline Scapoletti. Sophia Szymanski. Logan Thornton. Daniel Tompkins. Olivia Ventola. Justin Boglin. Kathleen Walsh. In the four-year members of the Century Club are Matthias Pools. Aaron Kwan. Grace Leahy. Jillian Szymanski. Kirsten Stevens. And Emma Weston. NHS Century Club inductees. Before the night concludes, I would like to thank all the people that made this celebration of our students possible. First, I would like to thank our National Honor Society advisors, Ms. Bailey and Ms. Lombardo, for all they do. This organization would not have been possible without their hard work and long hours. I would also like to thank Mrs. Williams for being tonight's keynote speaker. We appreciate all the thought and care you put into this evening's words. Finally, I would like to thank all of you for joining us in our celebration of excellence this evening. Please join us on Main Street for some refreshments. Thank you and good night.